Hey guys, now that your seller account has been synced to JumpSend, I'm gonna give you a quick tour and then show you how to set up a campaign or a promotion. So come across to products up here. And now with our account synced, you should see all of your products from Seller Central displayed over here. Now you also see on the right hand side here, you can toggle on or off the ones that you want active. You can toggle on up to the number of products that your plan allows. So if you're ever unsure which products you have active on JumpSend, just pop back to this page. Now, I'm gonna show you how to set up an email campaign. Email campaigns are important for opening up that communication channel with your buyers, providing great customer service, and increasing the chances of receiving reviews. To begin, click Create New. On this page, you can choose from one of our pre-made campaigns, or you can start from scratch and build your own. Let's create a brand new one in Custom Campaign. On this page, we select which product we'd like to send emails out for. I'm gonna select the blue baby hooded towels here, but you'll notice that it still appears gray. It's not the, the normal blue color that it would be when it's been toggled on. Now, why is that? It's because this product has different variants, okay? So you'll see that over here, it says show variants. Let's click on that one and we can now see the different variants that are available. We need to open this one up and select the specific variant that we want for this particular email. So now let's come down and toggle this one on, and now we've actually selected a specific variant. Now that we see this blue color here, we can move on to the next step. Now, this page may seem confusing when you first arrive here, but it's actually quite easy to use once you know how. Firstly, what is a trigger? Well, if you click on this plus sign here, this is what initially triggers an email to be sent out. And we've got four different things that could trigger an email to be sent. This is when a customer makes a purchase, when their product has been marked as shipped by Amazon, or also when it's been marked delivered by Amazon. We've also got the ability to use a refund as a trigger so that we can send specific emails to customers who have requested a refund. So the first one that we wanna set up is a purchased email. Next, we just click onto the, the very next plus sign. Now we can choose when we would like this email to be sent. ASAP, as soon as the, the purchase has been made, or do we wanna set a number of days afterwards? So let's choose days for this one. And now you'll see that we can choose a number of days. We might want it one day after, for instance. And now you'll see that that has been added. This is called a, a node tree. So I'm gonna to refer to these as nodes, okay? But let's say that we wanted to change our mind. I'm just gonna hit that little cross there and delete this node. I'm gonna go back to this step and I'm actually gonna select ASAP, okay? So when a customer makes a purchase uh, within zero days or ASAP, this email is gonna be triggered. So next, let's click on the plus sign again and we want an email to occur here. Now we're in the email builder and we can type whatever we want here to our customers We've got formatting options, so we can go through and format it however we would like to. What you're gonna find really useful are these autofill tags over here. So what are they? Well, this will autofill a customer's details, whether it be their name, their order number, a particular product or product name. All these things can be swapped out for each individual customer. In other words, you can write one email and we can swap out the name of the customer each time so that it appears to be a personalized email. So here we would want buyer first name. So I'll take that off bold. You can put in, hey, buyer first name. Thank you for your order. And so on and so forth. And you can use these other autofill tags here as well. Let's just add a subject here. Thank you for your purchase. 
Then when you've completed your email, you can come down to preview it. And now you'll see what it will look like to your customers when they receive the email. Let's go back. Keep in mind, you can also add an attachment to your email. This could be a PDF instruction guide that goes with your product or a free ebook to accompany your product as well. Keep in mind though, to try to keep the attachment as small as possible. Under seven megabytes would be best. Then when you're completely finished, just come across here to save. You'll get a notification that it's been updated successfully. And you'll see that the email template has been added here as another step. At this point, you could come over and create a new trigger. Let's say that now we wanna send another email after it has either been shipped or delivered. Commonly, people will send three emails, and so they'll send another email maybe a few days after a product has been shipped, and then maybe five to 10 days after it's been delivered for a total of three emails, or often people will send only two emails. They'll send this purchased one here, and then perhaps one after it's been delivered. Again, maybe five to 10 days after. So let's create that email. So we've selected delivered as our trigger. This time we want to select, let's say seven days, one week after it has been delivered. Onto the next step, now we wanna write our email. We hope you like your baby hooded towel. And then again, fill out the uh, email however you would like to. Thanks for your order. All right, we're gonna save that email. That one's been updated successfully. I can close this now. So that's how you set up a basic two email sequence. But what if you decided later on that you wanted to add another email, for instance? Let's look at this delivered node tree here. So you'll see seven days after delivery, we've got an email going out. But what if we wanted another email to go out 14 days after delivery? Easy, to do that, just come down to add a new step. This time, go to days, and we're gonna make this 14 days. And then come down further, and then set up your email, just like before. So the great thing about this is that you can set up uh, as many emails as you like, underneath the delivered node or underneath each of these nodes. Now keep in mind that the number of days here is always from the original trigger, not from the previous email. When you've finished setting up your emails, just come down here to publish and hit yes to publish the campaign. You'll get a notification that that's been successful. And if we scroll down, you'll see that this one has been created down the bottom here. You'll also see that it's been toggled on as you can actually toggle on or off an entire campaign, the same way that you can turn specific emails on and off. If you ever wanna go in and change any of the emails, just come up and click onto the campaign to edit it and it'll bring you back to this screen where you can adjust your emails and so forth. Also keep in mind that you can come up and if you click on the header, you can rename it whatever you would like to. So blue baby hooded towel. And then come down to hit publish again to update the changes. And you'll see that those changes have been implemented. Now, if you ever wanna delete a campaign, just check the box here, come up the top and hit delete. I just deleted that campaign because I wanna show you another example. So we're gonna to come to create new, this time we're gonna have a look at a template so that you can see some of the emails that we have already pre-written. So let's go to two review requests. So we'll click on that one. And now again, we'll click show variants and scroll down to this one that's available here and toggle that on. The reason these other products are grayed out are because they're already part of other email campaigns. So you can only have a single ASIN or product as part of one email campaign. You could choose to set up an email campaign and send it out to all of your variations at once if they're very similar and you just want the same 
wording or emails to go out to all of those customers, or if they're different products, we'd probably recommend setting up a new email campaign for each one. That way you can be a little bit more personalized for that specific product. In this case, we've only got the one variation that we're not sending emails out for currently. It's this one down here. Uh, it's actually the gray color, not the blue color, sorry. Now let's go to next step. Now we can come up here and see the emails that we've already written. So definitely come in and have a look at some of these pre-written emails that we've used and also see how we go about using these autofill tags to get ideas on how to use them yourself if you create your own emails. This is email number one. Now let's come across and have a look at one of our other emails. So you'll get a, a, an idea how they're set out, the type of wording that we use and the different autofill tags that we use. Let's close that one and we'll come up here. Let's create a new trigger and click refunded. Now it's the exact same steps for setting up the refunded one as any others. Reasons that you might like to email a customer that has initiated a refund are that number one, you might be able to turn that refund around. Um, you know, you might be able to give them good customer service. They let you know what's wrong and you know, you might be able to prevent the refund from going through because the customer will still need to return the item to Amazon in order to get their refund back. So you might be able to prevent that happening or if they do wanna follow through with their refund, you might be able to prevent negative feedback or negative reviews on your listing. So it's a really good idea to set up an email to go out to refund customers. So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea about how the email campaigns work, the node trees, and how to set them up.